Get the little ones, sit back, relax, and listen to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police. Clint Barlow, his nephew, Speed Gibson, and Barney Dunlap, all of the International Secret Police, are flying to Hong Kong and the China Clipper with orders from headquarters to capture the criminal, the Octopus, whose powerful crime organization, like the tentacles of a giant octopus, embraces the whole world. At the moment, our three friends in disguise are halfway to their goal, having just landed at Wake Island. They have already had trouble with spies of their enemy, but do not know that the octopus has sent a renegade aviator splinters in a fast bullet plane to Wake Island to kidnap Speed Gibson so that Clint will be detracted from his purpose. Meanwhile, a weather report has warned that a typhoon is heading out of Formosan waters. The Clipper passengers have been asked to remain indoors. We find Speed, Clint, and Barney restlessly pacing back and forth in their room at the Clipper Inn. Gee, I always we didn't have to stay inside. I'd sure like to see that special two-seater plane close. Wonder who it belongs to. Yeah, I wonder too, Speed. I don't like the looks of her. What do you mean, Clint? Now, it's very unusual for any sort of plane to land at Wake Island excepting the Clipper ships. It's too far out. Uh, that little plane must have terrific power. I wonder why. Maybe some guy's trying to break another record or, of some mm, sort. Maybe. I don't like the looks of it right at this time, especially on top of everything else that's happened. You mean the jewel smuggler that tried to break into our room on Honolulu and also that note from the octopus... The warned everyone at the table to lay off? Yeah. I'm uneasy whenever we're off the clipper ship. When we're on land, even in mid-ocean, the octopus has a chance to strike. I'd just like to see him start anything way out here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Well, well. What courage you have, Grandma. <laughs> you jumped a mile, Barney. <laughs> oh, me nerves are all shot. It's them goony birds, I think, or those other feathered things that moaned. I wish we were in China. Well, don't worry. We soon will be. Remember your disguises now. Uh, who is there, please? Jean and Marsha. Oh, just a second. I uh, hope we didn't disturb you. Just wanted to see if you had gone down to the lobby yet. No, but we will now if you'll guarantee us your company, Miss Winfield. Oh, try and get rid of us. When I asked for your protection until I could deliver Jean to her father in Hong Kong, I really meant it, Mr. Fletcher. And you've been so kind on the trip. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Why, it's a pleasure, ma'am. Down in Texas, there's nothing we like to do better than protect women and children. Uh, well, if you and you are ready to leave the room and go down to the lobby, Monsieur Fletcher, I will lock the door. Oh, sure thing, Mr. Dorsey. Come along, Earl. I'm coming, Pop. There we are. I do not believe anyone can get in the room without our permission. I hope not. Your experience in Honolulu was enough for one trip. I should say so. Mr. Fletcher, all of you, I don't know just how to say this, but ever since Earl rescued Jean from drowning at Waikiki, I've felt as if you three were our only friends. I've already told you that the octopus has had a sinister influence on my life. I told you that because I trusted you and felt that all three of you are not quite what or who you appear to be. Well, uh, I do not understand what Mademoiselle means. Oh, I'm not saying all this because of idle curiosity. I think you know that. Perhaps I'm trying to warn you. Oh, I don't know. It all sounds so silly when I try to put it into words. But that plane in the lagoon... The bullet plane? Yes. This afternoon, right after we arrived, 
Jean went down to the beach to look for some more shells. She found some right beside the plane. And while she was collecting them, the aviator came down, not seeing her since he entered the plane from the other side. And he put on his flying helmet, twisted some dials in front of him, and talked into a little round thing, giving some sort of mixed-up letters and numbers. Shortwave radio with earphones concealed in pockets in his flying helmet, just like the United States Navy uses for plane-to-ground communication. Oh, Mademoiselle Jean, now think. Can you recall the letters and numbers he used? Mm, no, Mr. Dorsey. But whatever station he was calling was in Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Say, what about... Oh, wait, wait. Isn't that, that the aviator? There at the other end of the lobby? Yes, that's him. He's watching us. Doesn't look very mysterious to me. But well, maybe we are attaching too much importance to him. Our staring has probably attracted his attention. That's what I think. Look, there's the clipper captain over there. Let's go and ask him about this typhoon we've been hearing so much about and forget that flyer. Very well. Are you coming, Earl? I'd like to stay here and look at this case of shells, rocks, and stuff that have all been taken from this island, Mr. Dorsey. Me too. Oh, all right. But be sure and not go outside. Remember the typhoon warnings. Danger signals, Earl. I get it, Mr. Dorsey. Don't worry. And keep an eye on Jean, will you? You bet, Miss Marcia. Hmm. I wonder if that aviator's really trying to establish a new speed record between Guam and Wake. What do you mean, Earl? Monsieur Dorsey and Pop were asking about him right after we landed. Of course, you know that anybody who lands here is questioned by the authorities to find out why they landed. Because this is one of the government naval bases, and they don't want anyone around who hasn't got a good reason to be here. I don't blame them. This fellow had good credentials, all right, but that doesn't mean anything. A criminal always makes sure he's protected that way... When he's really up to something. Why, Earl, you talk just like a detective. Uh, uh, no, I don't, Jean. But I am kind of curious, because I think that guy's way out here for something more than just a speed wreck. I wouldn't be too curious, Earl. He looks like a villain to me. A villain? You wouldn't know one if you saw him. I would, too. And you better be careful of him. Say, listen, I've got enough people telling me what to do with Pop and Monsieur Dorsey without you adding your bit. All right. Let's look at these shells and things instead of that man. I think they're lots more interesting, don't you, Earl? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. You're not looking at them at all. I'm watching that aviator. He's coming over here. Do you think we'd better tell your father and Mr. Dorsey? No. They're busy now. And I'd like to talk to this guy. You go look at that map over there or something, will you, Jean? No, I want to hear what you're going to ask him. But, Jean... Is it another mystery? No, it isn't another mystery. Oh, hang around if you want. But let me do the talking. Sure. Hello, kids. Oh, hello. Hello. Saw you two coming off the clip and was kind of interested in knowing how you liked the trip. Oh, it was swell. Like flying, huh? Yeah. I I do some of it myself. You do? How old are you, kid? Fifteen. And I'm twelve. Imagine that. Kids your age flying over thousands of miles of water. And what'll you be doing when you get as old as me? What are you doing? Why... Oh, I'm trying to establish a new speed record between Guam and Wake Island. Bet you could. We saw your plane during our landing. Looks plenty fast. Would you like to see it close? Oh, we couldn't do that. There's a typhoon heading this way. Oh, we have time before that strikes. You can help me check a mooring. You'd better stay here, little girl. But your friend here and me will go to see to it and be back as quick as a wink. That's a good idea. You wait here, Jean. But Earl, remember what Mr. Dorsey... I know, I know. If they should notice I'm gone, don't say where. I'll tell them all about it when I get back. But supposing you don't get back? Well, what's going to stop me? Come along, young fellow. If you want to take a look before the typhoon strikes, come on. Earl, don't go. Please don't go, please. So, you see, Mr. Fletcher, according to our calculations, Wake Island will not feel the full force of the typhoon. It will pass southwest of us. But for safety's sake, I want all my passengers to remain here in the hotel. Good, that's fine. When do we eat, Captain? <coughs> will the clipper be delayed in the takeoff for Guam, uh, Monsieur Le Capitaine? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Dorsey. We're in constant communication with Guam, and they say that the typhoon will be surely safely passed by the time we're ready to leave Wake. 
Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to Jean. She's still over there by that case of rocks and shells. But I don't see your son around anywhere, Mr. Fletcher. Oh, he can't be far off. Let's mosey on over there. Uh, thanks a lot for the information, Captain. Uh, yes, indeed. You're entirely welcome. Uh, uh, Monsieur Fletcher, the aviator is also missing. Uh, what? I certainly hope that we will find Earl somewhere about. Oh, Jean will know where he is. Jean, honey! Oh, Marcia, I'm so glad you've come. I'm getting sort of worried. Worried? Why? Earl went outside with that aviator that you were talking about. Outside? Why? What did he tell you? Why, Mr. Dorsey, you're not French anymore. Never mind that, Jean. Why did he go after we told him not to? The aviator wanted to show him the plane, that he could help him move it better, too. Oh, well, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out there. Yeah, we're not too late. Oh, I don't understand, but if Earl's in trouble, shouldn't we ask for help? No, we can't, not yet. Quick, let's get out the door before anyone tries to stop us. Miss Winfield, you wait here with Jean. Hold everything. I'm going to open the door. Oh, if I could only do something to help you. I told Earl not to go. <laughs> Watch yourself, honey. Everything that isn't fastened down is... He's have to go up in the air. Help me shut this door. Uh, uh, can, you, can you see anything of speed? No, I can't even see the plane in this wind. Well, come on. we got to go down for war. Here, link arms with me. We'll have to fight this wind every inch if we expect to get down there. Lean against her. Speed! Speed! That saved your breath. You couldn't hear us in this wind. Look, look. That column of water racing toward us. The typhoon whirlwind. Down on your stomach, Barney. Down flat. It's our only chance. 